Hello Earthlings and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to set up a Raspberry Pi with Astroberry to remote control all of your astrophotography gear while wrapped up warm inside. For this you can use a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 but I would recommend a Raspberry Pi 4. The main reason for this is the Raspberry Pi 4 has two USB 3 ports which will allow for faster image downloading if you have a USB 3 camera. The Pi 4 also has true gigabit ethernet or 1000 megabits per second whereas the Pi 3 is limited to around 300 megabits per second and only has a USB 2. The Pi 4 also has better Wi-Fi if you'll be using that instead of Ethernet. Ethernet is the way to go if you can. Ethernet cables are quite cheap and a decent outdoor Ethernet cable can be had from Amazon for around 10 to 15 pounds. One note on Ethernet cables, don't buy a CCA or copper coated aluminium cable or aluminum yeah. Pure copper will give the most reliable signal, especially over a long run, say at the bottom of your garden. For gigabit ethernet, a Cat5e or Cat6 cable is required. Cat5 is not rated for gigabit and may work briefly, but will not work for long. Ethernet is much more reliable than Wi-Fi and will allow a robust connection, allowing faster downloading of images with less latency. To get all of this to work, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. The 4 is available on Amazon for £65. You'll need a decent SD card of at least 16 gigabytes, but 32 gigabytes or more is recommended if you intend to store images on the Pi, which can be useful when you're away from home, or images can be stored on the Pi as well as copied to your main control computer. A high quality SanDisk micro SD card is recommended. Don't cheap out on the SD card and risk losing all your data or corrupting the Raspberry Pi. You'll also need a good 5 volt USB power supply able to provide at least 2.1 amps. The official Raspberry Pi power supply is good for this purpose. One side note here, each USB device you connect will draw some power so take that into account. A good option is to buy a good powered USB free hub ideally with high current outputs for charging phones and tablets and use one of those outputs to power the Pi. This way, all of your USB devices will get solid power and you won't need another plug just for the Pi. A lot of USB hubs can be powered from 12 volts, which can be very handy if you're in the field. Using a USB 3 hub to connect all of your USB 2 devices also means that a USB 2 hub won't be the bottleneck. The one I used is linked in the description. Chances are that the ambient temperature may drop below the dew point, where moisture in the air starts to condense on anything cold, such as the metal in the Raspberry Pi or other electronics as well as on your telescope. Although the Pi will get a bit warm which will help prevent this, moisture can still condense on parts of the circuit board causing damage over time if not a short circuit. I use a waterproof enclosure that seals the cables when the lid is attached. There's a link in the description to the one I use. This allows me to put all of the mains powered items and sensitive electronics in a sealed enclosure but still easily add and remove things just by opening the lid. Power and Ethernet goes in and all the USB cables and power for the mount and camera comes out to the scope. It's also very handy having all the electronics in one box that can easily be carried out and stored. Okay so the way that you get Astroberry onto the SD card is head over to astroberry.io, link in the description, click on download and again download the Astroberry image and you'll also want to grab a piece of software called Belena Etcher. Now this is used to flash the image onto the SD card so download that for your operating system. Once that's downloaded open it up Find the download file, here's Astroberry. Select the SD card that you want to use and click flash. Wait for it to finish and verify and safely remove the SD card if it's not automatically safely ejected. Once that's done, pop in your Raspberry Pi, power it up and you're away. Okay, let's start by looking at the waterproof case that I use. First thing in here is the 12 volt power supply. I currently use an old PC power supply as it will provide more than adequate current on the 12 volt rail. If you want to use an old PC power supply, just connect the green wire from the main motherboard connector to 0 volt, the black wires. So, apologise for all of the uh, spaghetti of cabling. Here's the power supply. And here you can see I've commoned up several of the yellow 12 volt cables and several of the black 0 volt cables and you can see the green wire connected in there. Connected to the 12 volt output I have a fuse block like you might see on a boat or motorhome. This is to protect the wires and power supply in case of a short circuit. Currently I only have mount power connected to this but soon I will be using the fuse block to also power the camera, USB hub and Raspberry Pi through the hub. At the moment I'm using a mains USB power supply to power the Raspberry Pi and a separate mains to 12 volt power supply for the camera. Let's tidy all this up a bit. 
Okay, so next is the mains extension lead that I use. I put this at the front under where the cables exit. So here's the power strip that I use. Put this in here. And this is where the power exits. So I'll connect up the PC power supply. So here is the Raspberry Pi 4 that I use with a heat sink case to dissipate the heat from the Pi as it can get quite warm. Here is the USB power supply that I use and a USB-C cable. So let's plug that in. So next I'll connect up the USB cables to the Raspberry Pi, starting with the USB 3 cable, which goes to the camera. I use a ZWO 1600 camera, which has USB 3 in and a two port USB 2 hub for connecting other devices, which I use to connect the ZWO filter wheel. Later when I get an electronic focuser, I will connect this to the ZWO camera as well. So let's connect that up. Make sure to use the blue USB 3 ports. And I'll put the cable out here. There's also a USB 2 cable, which I use to connect to the mount, which I plug into a USB 2 port here. And bring out here. There's also a USB 2 to USB C cable that I use for the guide camera, which I plug into a USB 2 port. I connect the guide camera directly to the Raspberry Pi rather than into the main 1600mm camera to provide more bandwidth for the main camera to download images. Instead of having all of these USB cables coming out of the enclosure, it would be better to use the USB 3 hub as mentioned previously and have all of the USB cables connected directly into that, which would help keep the cables tidier. Uh, next is the Ethernet cable that I use. And this is a 5 meter Cat5 E cable. So I'll connect this into the Raspberry Pi, like so, and let's bring it out of here. Also in this case, this is a 12 volt power supply that I use for plugging into the ZWO 1600mm camera. So I'll plug that in now, and now I'll tuck the extension lead under where all of the cables exit. Actually, let's move this USB power supply to the end, give us a bit more room. And the same with the PC power supply cable. I apologize, this is not the neatest uh, wiring ever, but it's all quite safe. Now the only thing to note with the Raspberry Pi, just make sure none of these connections are able to short out on something metal. But with all of these cables in here, it's not gonna be moving around too much. Now that we have all the electronics in the case, I'll seal it up with the lid. Now, if you want to use the same enclosure as me, just make sure you keep all the cables in the right position as you put the lid on and lock it in place. Once this is all working, I don't have to open the case, apart from to make this video. Here you can see the rubber grommets and the seal around the edge, which keeps it all nice and waterproof. And there is my sealed astrophotography electronics. Okay, so now we've got everything connected up to the Raspberry Pi with AstroBerry running. Everything's all powered up and connected to the network. So I'm going to open up Ecos. I've already opened up KStars. So here's Ecos. I'll show you the profile which I've already created. See here. Make sure to select the mode as remote. Make sure to tick Indie Web Manager and enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi here. Now, as I previously mentioned, it's a very good idea to set a static DHCP lease. What that means is that your router will always give the same IP address to the Raspberry Pi. And this is a bit outside of the scope of this video, but if you log into your router, which you should be able to find the login details on the back of it, if it's one provided by your internet provider, and somewhere in there, if you Google the uh, make a model, you should be able to find where to set a static DHCP lease. This can be very useful. Now, if your router doesn't support this, then you can set your Raspberry Pi to have a static IP address so it won't use DHCP. A DHCP is basically the mechanism which issues IP addresses to devices on a network. But anyway, so you need to select the mount that you have. Like I said earlier, I have a Skywatcher AZ EQ6R Pro, which connects using EQ mod mount. My CCD is a ZWO CCD. The guide camera is as well a ZWO CCD. I have an ASI filter wheel, and unfortunately I don't have adaptive optics, or a dome, or a weather station, or a focuser. Once you've set everything up as you need, click save, and then click start. 
and everything should connect. Now, one thing to note from, uh, for the direct USB connection for the Skywatch mounts, I have to set the board rate to 115200 or 115K2. And the way that you set the board rate is you come to the connection tab and select the board rate here. Once that's done, close that. We can go through all of the settings as, as shown previously. I will go into much more detail using this in real world <laughs> when I finally get a uh, clear night sky, but fingers crossed for that. So just to give you a quick demonstration, if I right click somewhere and say EQ mod, well, first we need to unpark. And then EQ mod mount, go to. And as hopefully you'll be able to see, the mount starts slewing. And that is basically all there is to getting it all set up and running. Now, with the Raspberry Pi, all I did was burn the AstroBerry image onto the SD card, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and that's it. I didn't connect it to a monitor. I didn't do anything like that. I just put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, powered it up, connected it to the network. I'd already set a static DHCP lease, so I know the IP address, uh, but you will need to know the IP address. And that's really all there is to it. It's that simple. And using this setup, I've been imaging, not very much, unfortunately, but I've been able to image, I've been able to plate solve, I've been able to guide, I've been able to do everything that I need to do, and all from inside. Thank you very much for watching this video. The next video will be showing exactly how to use the software for proper imaging. And remember, we are star stuff, contemplating star stuff. Clear skies.